Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Bug Bounty series. In this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at how to use WFuzz. Alright, now I am going to be imposing a structure to this series and I'm going to be starting off uh, with each sort of phase during the, the security assessment or the bug bounty hunt, whatever you want to call it. So uh, again, we're starting off with scanning and reconnaissance and I'll sort of move on from there. So for those of you asking what exactly is going on, there you go. So I mentioned that I used WFuzz in the previous video and uh, again I got a lot of questions about it so I thought why not start off with this tool because it really is an awesome tool. So for those of you wondering what exactly WFuzz is and how it can help you, well WFuzz is essentially used to discover web content and directories. However, it gives us much more functionality than that so its main features are content discovery or web content discovery rather and form manipulation or brute forcing as it's also known as, uh, which is sort of like an indirect translation, but you know, it's known on the streets, on the hacking streets. Anyway, so we are gonna be using the sec list word list as I mentioned in the previous video, because I, I, again, I said, I want to keep it standardized. So uh, the sec lists are gonna be quite important for this series. So I do recommend that you get them, you, you get started with them. All right. so. Uh, I have my terminal here and what I've done for this particular video is I have a WordPress installation running locally on my local network so that I can demonstrate a few of the uh, awesome bits of functionality that WFuzz offers in regards to form manipulation and uh, web content discovery. All right, so let's start off with form manipulation and brute forcing and or brute forcing. All right, so what I've done is I'm currently running Burp Suite here and uh, I've intercepted uh, the uh, few packets here. Let me just forward all of them and uh, we can actually get started. All right, so let's go back to our terminal here. Apologies. And uh, the command for WFuzz again is very, very simple. WFuzz and I'm just gonna open up the help menu. Now I will not be covering every parameter or every option here because my goal is to cover the most important bits and how to use it for both of these functions. So this, uh, in, in regards to web content discovery, uh, it is very, very similar to a tool like Darebuster. So I've covered Darebuster before, but I, I prefer using um, I, I prefer using this tool uh, in, uh, rather than using Darebuster or Dare uh, because this allows me to sort of customize uh, the, the discovery uh, in, in regards to what exactly, what files I can find, what I can exclude, etc., etc. All right, so let's start off with form manipulation. So uh, you can go ahead and take a look at all of these commands. I'll be explaining them as we go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to type in WFuzz, all right? Now, when you type in WFuzz, uh, you now need to specify whether or not uh, you want uh, to start off with your word list. But again, I'll explain to you the premise of what's going on here. So let's say I wanted to brute force this WordPress login page right over here, which as we know is WordPress login.php. All right, now by default, as I've mentioned or and I've taught before in other videos, you can do this with Burp Suite and you can also do it with the community edition of Burp Suite. However, the issue is it does throttle the amount of requests you can send to the web server, which is uh, both a good thing and a bad thing because on one hand, you, it can actually cause a DOS attack depending on the type of server. And of course, uh, the good thing is that, uh, uh, well, the, the bad thing is it, it can take a lot of your time. So with this particular tool, that being WFuzz, we can essentially perform this brute force and customize how we want it done. All right, so I'll explain this in a second. So let's say we want to brute force this login page. All right, but we have the, we have the email or the username. That's just one example, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So. Uh, I'm currently using Foxy Proxy and we have the Burp Proxy uh, intercepting currently. So I'm just going to hit some test information and I'll put the password as 1234 and hit login and hopefully that gets intercepted and I'll explain what, what I'm talking about. So this is the post request that is being sent to the server. So you can see that our two parameters here are log and PWD, which is an abbreviation for password. So the values are the most important bits here. So we have the first value, which is test, and that is the username or email value. And we have PWD, which is the password. So let's say we are trying to brute force the password. We already have the email. Now for this particular case, I'm not really gonna be focusing on brute forcing it. I'm simply gonna show you how to do it. So this is very, very important in regards to the post request and understanding what 
two parameters exist here and which one of them you want to fuzz. I'll get to that and the fuzz variable in a second. So this can work on any uh, login page, regardless of whether it is a CMS like WordPress or Joomla. It could be any other admin page, as, as long as you understand uh, how the parameters are being saved and you know in, in, in what form they are being sent in the request. So let's get into this right now. So I'll go back into my terminal and I'll type in wfuzz. All right, so wfuzz. And if we just open up the help menu, you can see that the C command, let me just go up here which I'll uh, sort of show you what it means if I can find it here. There we are. The C command is what we'll use and that will allow us to output with colors. So we'll also use that right now. All right, so wfuzz, let me just clear that out. All right, wfuzz, and we want to use the C command. So that is output with colors. And then we specify the word list we want to use. Now you can also specify the payload. And of course the payload for a particular word list would, the, would be the file payload. So for example, I could say uh, for a payload, you specify that with the parameter Z and then the name of the payload, which is file and then a comma and then uh, the directory of the word list. So I could say user uh, share uh, word lists. Um, I want to use set list, but I've already created a test. Um, I have already created a test word list for myself. So that that is one example. Now, when talking about using uh, the when talking about using a word list itself, that is de denoted by the W option. So again, uh, root desktop, and we are going to go to word list right over here, word list.txt. And the reason I've created it is because I just want to keep it really, really simple. We're not going to brute force anything. All right. So now we need to understand what results to exclude. All right. So we've specified our word list and that's perfectly fine. So what, what do we need to exclude? We want to exclude all the invalid attempts. All right. Now with WordPress, uh, if we have um, an incorrect password, so let me just forward that. You can see that the, uh, the message we get is invalid. And of course, we can specify that uh, by using the HS command. So again, uh, the HS command is very, very simple. So let me just open that up in a new window. And I know I'm not using Terminator, but I'll explain why in a second. So uh, let me just open that up. Uh, so if we take a look at the HS command, all right. So the HS command allows us, let me just zoom out. The HS command right over here allows us to show or hide responses with the specified rejects, all right. So rejects is a, a particular uh, collection of strings. So uh, SS will show the, the responses that you've specified. So if we said SS, that would show us the invalid attempts and HS would show us uh, the, it'll essentially hide the invalid attempts. So now that we can, we have understood that, let's actually put that in. So that is HS and we type in, in invalid. All right. And then after, the, after this, we essentially need to put in uh, our our post request. All right. Now our post request, uh, again, as I said, is sorted very, very differently. And what we're looking for is the two parameters that we want to fuzz. All right. So for example, I can say D and that again is what we're going to be using for the post. All right. So if I can just find it over here so that you can get the official description. So there we are post data used, use the post data example, ID, etc, etc. So these can be you can pass as many parameters as you want, as long as they're included within the uh, within the post uh, within the post re request. All right, so uh, in the post request, if we just test that out, so I'm going to just say test, test, and we'll just say login. And we just check burp, uh, you should be able to see the post request and the parameters for WordPress. So we'll give that a few seconds. And for some reason, oh, there we are. So we're looking for log and PWD. All right, so what we can do is we can copy that or we can simply just type it out, which I'll do so that we can understand what's going on. All right, so we say log is equal to, and that is the parameter for the username. Now we already have the username uh, or the email. So we, the, the email I believe was admin at uh, example.com, if I'm not wrong, that is what I set for this particular WordPress installation, example.com. And of course, after that, we have the password. So Again, that is denoted by PWD. So and PWD is equal to and in here is where we would put our fuzz variable. All right. So you might be wondering what exactly is the fuzz variable in regards to WFuzz. All right. So the fuzz variable is WFuzz's way of identifying where it should be inserting the word from a word list. All right. So this is the particular parameter you will be fuzzing essentially or where the words in the word list will be replaced. 
All right, so for the password, we simply type in fuzz. So when wfuzz executes this command, it will look for the first variable and this is the value it will essentially uh, replace with the words in the word list. Now that is clear, we can move on. All right, so we close the brackets here and we specify the URL with U and then we specify the login URL, which is again right over here and that is HTTP uh, 192.168.1.109 and that is WordPress login.php. Excellent. So now we can paste that in right over here and that is our login, uh, our, our login page. And once we hit enter, now, of course, I do not have the password, uh, the, and the, real pass uh, the, the real password within the word list. I have about five words. I'm simply showing you that it does work. So I'm going to hit enter. And uh, there you are. You can see that immediately we get, uh, we, we, we get our requests and uh, we, we essentially get our responses right over here. Now, you can see that by default, if I'm to just forward this uh, right over here, the, the default response will, of course, give us a page back, which is why we get our 200 status codes here. And of course, you can see right over here, we have the response, the lines, the word and the payload that was given uh, right over here. So we do not have any successful passwords that were, we were able to get. Uh, and of course, you can change this out by saying or using the variable fuzz2. All right, so I'll show you how to do that in a second. So we'll use the same command right over here. But now we can use the same word list for both the username and the password. All right, so we can say, for example, for the email, we can also say fuzz2. However, fuzz2 is, de is denoted very differently. So it is fuzz2z. All right, so fuzz2z. And that again will be, uh, it will essentially use this, this word list for both the username and the password. And so we can hit enter as well. And again, we don't get any right over here. Fatal exception, first words and number of payloads do not match. And there you are, you, you get the response. So that is how to use WFuzz for, um, for form manipulation or brute forcing. Uh, now let's talk about directory brute forcing, which is very, very similar to what Darebuster and Derb do. A lot of tools do it, uh, but I personally like uh, WFuzz for this. Now, one thing to take into consideration is the fact that uh, that any directory brute forcing tool is going to be extremely noisy and can cause a DOS attack if the server is unable to handle the amount of requests. That's why with a tool like Darebuster, you have the ability to change the amount of requests you want to send to that particular web page. So do take this into consideration when performing any tests on any particular target. It's very, very important. All right, so let's get started with directory brute forcing. Now, as I said, we're going to be using the seclists word list. And more, uh, more, more, uh, more specifically, we're going to be using the web content and the SVN digger uh, word lists, which are specified or were created specifically for WFAS and Darebuster. So for discovery, really. So I'll show you the directory right over here. So I type in WFAS and the word list is user uh, share Sorry, that is word list and that is under sec lists and that is under discovery and we're looking for web content and we're looking for the SVN digger and we'll use all.txt. All right, so all.txt uh, or all dares, whatever you feel is appropriate for your particular uh, security assessment. We then need to specify, uh, if I can just open up the other terminal here, we need to specify the HC command. All right, so the hc command will hide the responses with the specified code, lines, words, or characters. So again, the status codes, it allows you to hide responses with particular status codes. So for example, if we wanted to hide uh, responses with the status codes of, uh, for example, 404 or 403, we can do that and that'll give us only uh, the directories or the files that do exist. All right, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we can type in hc, all right, and after that, we type in the status codes we want to exclude. So that is uh, the status code 403 and 404, and you can separate them with commas right over here. And after that, we type in our URL, which I believe I have copied onto my clipboard, and I am going to hit enter. All right, and this is going to begin. Uh, for some reason, we're getting an error here. Apologies. Uh, did I specify the URL, the URL parameter, or the URL option here? Um, looks like uh, we weren't, oh, apologies guys, uh, I forgot to place the fuzz keyword and this is something that you need to take into consideration. So let me just clear that up. So 
depending on what web server you're targeting and the directory and the subdirectory you want to fuzz uh, or you want to perform your directory brute forcing on, again, you need to specify the fuzz variable. I, for some reason, just forgot this. I do apologize, guys. So if I want to directly um, brute force uh, the topmost directory, which is the root directory of the web page or the web server, uh, so I'll essentially just do it after uh, 109. I don't want, I'm not really going into any directory. So I want to fuzz this directory. So I simply put in the variable fuzz and that should begin the fuzzing process right over here. And that is performing our directory brute force. So you can go ahead and take a look at all the responses here. So you have the ID, the response, and as you can see, it goes through all and is excluding all the 404 and the 403 status codes or the response codes, whatever you want to call them. So you have the word, the character and the payload, which is essentially the file it was able to uh, to essentially find or detect. So you can see we have the readme.html, license.txt, index.php, WP content or WordPress content, WP admin. So it's doing what Darebuster uh, does. And of course, it is uh, it is a great alternative. And I personally like using it. All right. So you can use WFuzz for a variety of other uh, bits of functionality, but in my opinion, it does it really, really well in regards to form manipulation or brute forcing and directory brute forcing, which again is done by tools uh, similar uh, or like Darebuster or Deb. So again, let me know what you guys think. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or at the forum at hackersploit.org and I'll be seeing you in the next video.